Atari ST Stoss Basic Grief Number One Introduction In this video, I'm going to describe some of the decisions and algorithms I'm using to create my Stoss game Grief. Grief is a classic arcade variant inspired by the game Gorf, but it's not a port. The first level started with tutorials I was writing to show how an ST or other classic game developer might design the logic and rendering for a Gorf like game using ideas from its first invader stage, but Grief will be its own game. It will contain five different stages in the arcade shooting player ship sliding style of game represented by Gorf, Galaxian, and Galaga. I don't plan to copy any of those games though, but combine the elements found in those and others to make five unique stages. We are going to first create a game loop that will run our logic, and then we'll create the actual logic. In this session, I will demonstrate the final choice I've made for our enemy formation rendering solution, place that formation on the screen, and also place a joystick controllable player ship on the screen. This is my first step in really making a game since 2010 and my first programming on the ST since 1989. I've been playing with Stoss and making tutorials and some half or less than half finished clones, but the buck finally stops here, making something real. This is not a tutorial, but it's a learning opportunity for both the viewer and this budding homebrew programmer. I will show code and talk about how I decided to solve problems during the development. The goal is to evolve my code and ideas as I progress through this game and other games. What's the ultimate goal here? The goal is to make Atari ST and Atari STE games and optimize them in both STOS, GFA Basic and beyond. In STOS, we will incorporate extensions that help with the rendering, leaving STOS to be more of a Lua-like scripting engine. And when we get to GFA, we have some of the same options with Spriteworks 2.0. These allow us to focus on gameplay, graphics, and sounds, and simple optimizations rather than slogging through assembly language as the bulk of the behind the scenes code has already been created in assembly for us. For now, we are going to use Stoss and the Missing Link extension for the ST, and we're also going to add in some mod music playing for the ST. We'll use chip effects for gameplay sounds, and either a sample tune or a mod tune for title music. Okay, let's get started. Game Design In Part 3 of our Stoss Basic series, we discuss the various methods to render an enemy formation on the screen. In that session, we decided that Missing Link Bobs would be the best way to render the formation. Neil Holiday from StossCoders.com saw this and added one more rendering type idea that I had forgotten about. He suggested that we use the Missing Link scrolling map to render the formation. I thought this was a brilliant idea. So I went ahead and created a set of map tiles and a landscape map using Missing Link utilities. I also switched the game sprites from the standard Gorf Invaders to some from Ari Feldman's Spritelib GPU. I've created a set of sprites, well really just a single sprite right now, but there will be more later for the player ship. Here's the sprite. This is the player ship and by running this standard sprite file through the Missing Link make utility, I have turned it into a set of pre-shifted bobs for gameplay. I've also created a set of tiles for use with the enemy formation. Using the Stoss Sprite Utility, I made a set of sprites and then turned them into a set of world tiles with the same make utility used for the player ship. This utility created tiles that can be used on a four-way scrollable map. The formation I want to use for level 1 will look like this. The width of this formation is 160 pixels or 10 by 16 tiles. To make this scroll left and right, we have to add blank tiles to the left and right so we can simulate the game scroll. 128 pixels, the formation of 160 pixels, and then 128 more pixels. Let's take a look at the tiles I have created for use with the map designer, Eddie. The top row of icons are for loading and saving in the map designer, and the second row are the map tiles I've created. The first tile needs to be blank, so it can be used as an eraser. Then there are two frames of animation for each invader. I'll place one frame as a placeholder and I'll write code to flip between the frames in the next video. Here's the map I created for the scrolling formation. The scrolling map is 28 tiles wide by 12 high. I've used a red X in a box as a graphic tile around the outside. So when I display it on the screen in Stoss and scroll it, 
I can see when I've moved too far to the left or right. These tiles will not be visible to the player. The game code. Let's start with our game loop. We're going to split out our game code using Neil Holiday's VS Code plugin into five sections using the label and GoSub design pattern. It looks like this. GoSub system setup, GoSub load main data, GoSub reset game, GoSub init level, GoSub run game. System setup will contain some very basic setting and defaults that are needed to get our game started. Load main data will load in the basic database files needed for all game levels and set the palette. Reset game will allow us to create the first game and reset for new game once a game is over for the player. Init level allows us to set level specific information such as enemy formation and loading files as needed. Run game will contain the main game loop for our game code. Eventually we'll be adding more main labels and gosubs as we progress through the code. System setup. As we stated before, this is used to set up some basic game environment information for error trapping and FPS counter. We also turn off the cursor, the color flash, the key click, hide the mouse, and set the screen mode to zero. Load main data. In this section, we first load the main bobspur.mbk file, which right now only contains the player ship pre-shifted graphics. We also load the gwblocks.mbk file, which contains the pre-shifted world tiles representing the enemy formation. We also pick the palette from memory bank 5 and set pointers to the start of both of these memory banks. Reset game. In reset game, we're setting all of the variables back to their original values for a new game. First, we have the M string, which is simply a way of providing debug messaging in the code. The LVL, SCR, HLTL, WPN are used for the game level, player score, player health, and player weapon level. MDY and MDX hold the delta or change for each direction on each frame for the map scroll. In level 1, the map will simply scroll back and forth left and right on the screen, so we don't need an MDY. PX, PY, PDX, and PDY hold the player X and Y position and the change in those positions when the joystick is moved left or right, up or down. There's no up or down movement in level one, so PDY equals zero. Next, we have three arrays to hold data for player missiles. We'll not be adding those this time, but we have three parallel arrays to hold on or off for a player missile and the X and Y position for each missile. PDMY is the speed or current delta Y of the player missiles. Currently, it's negative four. That means they'll move four pixels per frame up the screen. EXG is set to false. We will use this to exit the game loop when it's set to true. The rest of the code places the press fire messaging on the game screen, waits for the fire button press, and then clears the screen with the missing link wipe command. Init level. This calls the level specific setup code for each level. We only have one level right now. So LVL equals one, and then we call at level one setup. Level one setup. First thing we need to do is load level specific information. In this case, we simply load the world map, gr1map.mbk into memory bank seven, and then set a pointer to the start of this memory bank. The mx equals 16 and my equals 16 set the start of the map display to the second row and second column so we won't see the red box border that I put in for debugging purposes. The world command is specific to missing link. It creates a scrollable world with a display window of 320 by 96, which is the entire screen width but only six tiles high. This holds the six rows of our enemy formation. Run game. Run game is the meat of the programming. Now that everything has been set up for the level, this sets the game loop running. On every frame level we want to, one, check input, two, update values based on input and other mechanics such as enemy patterns, missiles fired, etc., and render everything to the screen. At some point we'll also add check collision. We are first setting logic equals back, which is needed so we can draw everything to the background or logic screen and use page flipping to quickly set it to the physical screen before we render. As you may recall, this bypasses the standard STOS sprite rendering routines. Check input. Currently, this function looks for player joystick presses left and right and adds or subtracts the PDX value from the player PX value. 
we might move the actual addition and subtraction to the update function later, but for now we'll leave it here for ease of use. Game update. The game update function right now does only two things. It moves the formation by scrolling the map left and right on the screen. When doing this, it will check to see if the formation has made it too far left or right, and then starts the movement back in the opposite direction. The second thing it does is make sure the player cannot move off the screen by checking the PX value and sending it back to the min or max if needed. Game render. If the game loop was the meat, then game render is the actual steak and frites of what I'm doing today. First, we'll call the wash function to clean everything under the scrolling map. We do this because the map of the formation will clear the entire top of the game screen already, up to 320 by 96. We don't want to waste cycles doing it two times, so we only wash the bottom of the screen. Next, we render the formation with a second overloaded version of the world command. This version takes S6, which is a pointer to the beginning of the tiles, and applies them to S7, which is a pointer to the map and displays the map starting at MX and MY to the location 00, 00 on the screen. Next, we render the player ship with the bob command from missing link and update our frame counter. That's it. Let's see it in action in the interpreter. When we run game1.bas, we get about 25 frames per second. This is pretty good, and this is what we're looking for. Now let's run in gem with the toss runnable file. This compiled version is also 25 frames per second. So what we're looking at is pretty good to keep this as a playable game on a standard ST with no extra chip help. We'll be adding more and more to this and hope to keep it above 20 frames per second. And then we'll add in a few STE upgrades for sound and possibly blitter support. Next time we're gonna add collisions, player missiles, and some status bar values, and maybe even more. Until next time, into the vertical blank. Don't